Hi, my name's Pete. Welcome to We Buy in a Motor Caravan. I've already taken you around the Tribute T620, but we just wanted to do a little bit of a how-to video. It's a little bit different being on the Ford. Every single motorhome is different. So I'll just show you a little bit of what we look for when we're looking out around the motorhomes. First thing you need to look for is your leisure battery. This took us ages to, to find because on this particular one, your leisure battery is under there. The next thing to look for, make sure your vents are nice and clear, nice and clean. Never pressure wash your motorhomes. They are made out of wood. So just make sure you're not pressure washing them. They uh, are very fragile in that. And don't get water straight onto those vents. You've got a nice door lock here as well. So that will just clip in, nice piano door lock. Outdoor gas barbecue point, so that will just hook up your uh, gas barbecue there. But the best thing about this particular motorhome is your water inlet. You just have to take out the cap, get your hose, and fill it up. Now, on some other motorhomes, Bailey in particular, you've got uh, different little clips and claps, and you have to put this into that, just fill it up. Personally, I prefer just putting it in and letting it fill. On this particular model, we've got a two bike bike rack. Always make sure that you've got the safety clasp on so that it can't come crashing down and smashing you in the face, especially when cleaning, you can get a broken nose that way. With the Fiamma ones, it's nice and easy. You just unhook that, that up, and the bike rack comes down like that. Your wheels are going here, they'll hook in and over and lock in and these will lock onto your frame and now we get to the really rubbish bit of motorhoming or caravanning but motorhoming in our instance behind this window is your bathroom what comes with the bathroom a toilet where does your waste go in your Thetford cassette toilet there will be places on site that you can empty them generally into another toilet, into a proper toilet where you can just flush it away, rinse it and flush it. These are really easy to take out. You just pull the handle and out it comes. On the Thetford cassette, see so you've got the wheels so you can take it nicely. Take your poo poo to the toilet. In order to empty it, really simple. You turn this here unscrew there, hold your breath and empty it into the toilet. You'll then give it a few swirls out, a few, this particular button here actually, if it is over full, like bursting at the seams, press that and let a little bit of air out so you won't get the trick of wee wee and poo poo, you just get a full on flow of it coming out there. Um, nice and simple, once it's all empty, once you've swilled as many times as you like, generally three swills is about enough. Put about half a litre of water back in there or a pint and there's two ways of, you can either add your chemicals straight into here or you could drop a couple of capsules down, to the, down the toilets on the inside. You're going to want to heat your motorhome as well and that's where your gas locker comes into play. On the Tribute, you can hold two gas canisters in there. This is only the one pipe though, so to switch between the gas canisters, you have to unhook this one and hook up that one. Some of them will have two pipes where you just do a little twist of a nozzle uh, to go from one to the other. On any gas hookup, uh, it is different to righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's lefty-tighty, righty-loosey, which doesn't rhyme or make any sense, uh, but that's what you've got to do. So to tighten it up, it's lefty-tighty. To loosen it off, it's righty-loosey. On any Truma heated motorhome, this is a Truma heated motorhome, when you've got the gas running, we're, it's really cold out here today, it's four degrees. So we've got the heating on in there. You have to remove this vent. Really easy to remove, but it seems like it's so tricky if you don't know the knack. So when this is on, nice and stable like that, make sure you've got the hook there, push with your thumb, and off it comes. If you don't, you try pulling the wall off. This little hatch here, that's your electric hookup. You need to plug it in on site, get your hookup cable from any DIY store, and it's just nice and simply, make sure your lips to the top, 
and it's all clipped in to unhook it, press down this lever. Otherwise, again, pretty much like that vent, you're trying to pull the wall off. 95% of most homes have an awning. This has the Fiamma F45. It sticks out on this motorhome so you can see it a little bit. Some of them, they are a bit more built into there. Uh, but the awnings are great for shade and for having barbecues underneath. Like we said, there's a barbecue point here. What do you need first before you get the awning out? An awning pole. You get the hook, you put it in this hole here, then you fast forward the video. <laughs> got it to this level it's not great when you've only got a little bit of clearance so you've got to get your legs up every awning is going to be slightly different the Fiamas are really light because they're nicely easy tucked away you just pull it out give it a little twist and then down there you can see you've got two little holes and my shoes to make it nice and secure get both legs down and out before you do anything else. And as soon as you've done that, you can then unhook this and get it to whichever height you want it to be at. After you've finished your motorhoming holiday, always know where your two taps are. This is your waste tap, and this is your fresh water tap. Once you've unhooked everything, packed everything away, most sites nowadays have a little trough on the drive out where you can drive up, just empty both taps, and you'll start to drain away like that. This is important because you don't want to be carrying this load all the way home with you, and please don't just open the taps and drive off, it's not very nice. We're now in this beautiful Tribute T620. I wanted to go through the sleeping areas first. You've got two different sleeping areas. You've got a double bed up here, and you've actually got a double bed here as well, and I'll talk you through how that works. So this has got the safety gate there, and you do have a ladder. Personally, when I'm traveling, I will travel with that safety gate up, because then you can store the ladder behind it, you know it's not gonna slide off and smash your kids in the face uh, uh, on some sudden braking. Nice and easy to get the ladder set up hooks into these two hooks here and then you're in. It does say it's not suitable for children under six years old unsupervised. I wouldn't put a child under six years old uh, up there personally but as soon as you're up there you've got a light in the back corner and then you just hook that back on like that. You're nice and safe you're not going to roll out of bed and bump your head. Once you've done that your second area is actually here and it's the easiest bed I think I've ever ever had to transform in a most home all you actually do is drop this table down and do the filling cushions let me show you how <laughs> That's the bed all done. When you reconstructed it, don't forget before you drive away to make sure you're pulling your seat belts out and around so that you can travel safely when you're going. There is actually a fifth bed here for a fifth berth. I've definitely slept on worse in my time, but that's a story I won't go into. Stories I won't go into. Uh, that's your fifth bed there. You haven't got a fifth a way of traveling with a fifth person. Uh, some most homes you will have a lap belt under this seat here, but this particular one you don't. But if you do make a friend, they can sit here. One thing I always do before I go on any holiday, and it's a bit daddy, I know. I come into the most home and I double check that everything's working before we go, because the last thing you want to do is have your kids, I've got three of them, daddy, daddy, I want something to eat. And your gas doesn't work. So make sure you've got a full gas canister out the back and just make sure 
that each and every one of your rings keep burn, burn, burn. Those rings of fire, those rings of fire. So this particular motorhome has an oven grill running off the gas. Don't forget to uh, take your vent off outside. So it's, the way it, it's nice and easy, righty toasty. Make sure you get your grill on for your toast. Look at that. Righty toasty that side. That's where your toast happens. And left is your winner winner chicken dinner. So the last bit, someone always has to do the washing up. Uh, I would say it's generally me, but I'm generally the cook in the household, so it's more than likely going to be my wife. The sink is nice and useful. Hot and cold water, make sure that your water pump is on on the control panel, make sure you've got fresh water in your tank. This scared the hell out of me when it first happened, when I got my first motor home, because we've just filled the tank, we've got the boiler on, uh, and it's not pulling through clean yet. It's beginning to get warm actually already, but it's not pulling through clean yet. Just leave that running and eventually it will pull through clean. But this will happen when you first turn it on. Every motorhome has a fridge. This is the Dometic fridge. Again, remember, don't block the vents out the, out the back. Uh, make sure it's locked, so that is now locked, so that your milk and your beans, if you carry beans in your fridge, uh, but definitely your bacon and your eggs don't go flying around the van whilst you're driving. Unlock it, you've got a nice big fridge there for you. It can go from off, it can be powered on the gas. Hear that clicking? It means the gas is just firing up to make sure that the fridge stays cold. We are actually on mains hookup at the moment, so you can go to mains hookup. And whilst you're driving, to keep everything cool, you can go to your drivers uh, to the cab battery there. That there will just, like any fridge, make it as cold as you like. Me personally, I'm a nice, simple man. So I do like to have a nice, simple control panel. Uh, nothing really is uh, easier than this one. You're on off switch. This is if you want it to run off your leisure battery. If you're on mains hookup, pump it through to here. Your water pump that I just talked about, can now just about hear that kicking in in the background and if you're unsure on how much fresh water you've got hit that button and that's your level indicator there these just light switches great name every motorhome needs heating because they're essentially just a van with bits of wood around them this one's got one of the best ones out there. It's got the Traumatic Truma Ultra Heat. It works off both gas and electric. I'm just about to show you the gas element of it. Uh, and then I'll show you how it works on the electric side as well. Your gas, you just turn it through here. You have to make sure your pilot light is on and working. And then as soon as it's on and up, then you just turn it round. And you hear it kick in and you feel the heat coming out of it. You then move to this side here. And if you see these little holes here, they're not for the kids to put their Haribo in. Make sure that they don't do that. Uh, mine will probably try and shove balls in there. Uh, they are for the gas blown heating. So when you move this little nodule from the off position there to this sort of quiff type uh, setting here, that means that it'll be blowing at whatever setting this, you can probably hear it, Lower, higher, um, low, high. Um, and that means that these vents will be blowing out quite a lot of heat uh, because this one's up at four and a half. If you then flick this across to auto, they'll still be blowing the heat, they'll still be pushing it through. But what it'll do is it'll automatically balance, but it'll only balance up to the highest point of what your setting is. So it means your van won't get too hot. You don't want your van turning into a sauna. Make sure you've got that on the right setting. In the winter, obviously, turn it up a bit. In the summer, make sure it's a little bit lower. These little vents, and there's six throughout the van, uh, will make sure that it's nice and warm all the way around. And you need to keep those tuxes warm. This is your electric control panel for your heating. The Truma Ultra Heat. You've got 500, 1,000, or 2,000 kilowatts, and that is basically for how much powers coming into the van. Some campsites you do need to be down on the 500 and 1000. We're on the electric hookup at the moment. 
so we could just turn it to the 2000 little green light comes on twist your black knob and you've got your heating control like I say, winterizing your motorhome is really important uh, for two key reasons. One, you don't want your pipes freezing. The motorhome probably isn't get used, going to get used through the winter. And the second is that you uh, are probably not going to be insured on a burst pipe between November and March. Do check your motorhome insurance. Easiest way to make sure that all your pipes are going to be empty, you have to empty your pipes. Flick this switch here. You can hear it draining, I'll just turn that off so you can hear me. That will empty your water heater. As soon as you've done that, go around the rest of the motorhome, open up all the pipes. So open up your sink, open up your bathroom sink, take your shower head off and leave the pipe uh, dangling down into the shower so that that drains off nice and easily. And then go outside and open up those two pipes outside, your fresh water and your wastewater as well. Make sure there's nothing that can be taken to chance in your motorhome. So on the Truma water heater, you've got two ways of heating it, through the gas or through the electric. We're currently on main tuck up, so we're on the hottest electric because I like a nice hot shower. Or you can just flick the switch for the gas. Don't forget your fuse is under there. And that's basically how you heat your van. It's really easy. Even I can do it. So that's my walk around of this Tribute T620. There's a lot going for this van, as you can see. Personally, I love the way this double bed is so easy to, uh, to get into place. Really makes a difference when you've got young kids. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. My name's Pete. We buy a motor caravan. Get in touch with us soon. Have a nice winter. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Please press subscribe at the bottom or like if you're on our Facebook and watch the latest news and motorhome reviews. find out more information, you can go on our website, www.webuyanymotorcaravan.com. Telephone us on 01283 240 237.